Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time. Back with this Wednesday guest, Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. Good to be here. Something I love to do because uh, you and I kind of have, you know, 20 some odd years of real estate experience. We've both been in the financial economic game for a while is kind of just talk what I'm seeing because sometimes I miss aspects and you help me highlight them. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, What I want to talk about here is something that was popular when you and I were kids. And this was created in the Jimmy Carter era, which if you don't know who Jimmy Carter is, look him up. He was kind of important um a u.s a, president yeah. hint, oh, hint. Oh, hint, hint, by the way yeah one of those guys one of one of 46 people ever yeah. um he had he there was something created the misery index uh he was obviously a president in the late 70s uh i've talked about the late 70s just being a yucky decade uh and this misery index is kind of interesting because yesterday a follower of mine challenged me in a comment and basically said the economy today is worse than the global financial crisis, the GFC. And I have to tell you, when I first heard that, I'm like, no way. How could it be worse? I experienced it. My market went down 75%, but my experience was very kind of real estate focused. So I stepped back and and looked at it and we're going to go over the numbers because I have them here. But if if somebody were to just come up to you, Anna, and tell you today that the economy is worse today than, say, 2009, what what would you think just instinctively? You know, if you listen to the news, you would say, no way. Like (laughs) before the pandemic, things were amazing. Things were awesome. And we're just coming back from the pandemic and, you know, inflation's up because American people are doing better. If you listen to the news, that's what most people think. Um, Because I do study the economy, I've known that that's not quite right. I have not thought, you know, we're worse today than definitely in 2008, but I think that where we are today is extremely fragile, way more fragile than it was in 2008. And these things like a pandemic, you know, war with Ukraine, high inflation could tip us to a point where American people all experience much worse than we had in 2008. Yeah. And I agree with you. I, I, was, I was willing to admit that the economy is, and I've said it out loud, right, on many of my daily financial news, the economy is not nearly as strong, the consumer is not nearly as strong. But I would not, again, just a gut reaction have said, today is worse than the global financial crisis. The global financial crisis was the worst thing I've been through. Um, right. You know, 75% crash, you know, 2.8 million foreclosures. It was, it was bad, but one of the worst years of my life for sure. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. Having done not, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So now I step back and I go, okay, when in doubt, I go back to the data. So the misery index is interesting because it's rather simple. It's got a scary headline, uh, but it's simply made up of unemployment, U3 and CPI. So I've got the data and I chose 2009 because arguably that was the worst year. It certainly was the worst year for housing at negative 8.9% national decline. So right. I chose that year. You, you could pick a different year, but that's what I chose. So here we go. Unemployment, you just want to take a guess what the unemployment was in 2009, April 2009 specifically? 10%. Close, actually good memory. It was 9% in April. I think it got as bad as 10%, but it was 9% in April. Uh, and obviously this uh, last Wednesday, I think we reported 3.6%. So. On that metric, the economy is doing better. But again, the misery index has two components. The yes. other one is CPI. CPI uh-huh. was reported yesterday, 8.5%. What do you think CPI was April? Or I think this is a Q1 number, Q1 of 2009. Take a guess. Uh, CPI, probably 2.9%. 0.3. Oh, okay. 0.3. The months have me have me messed up, but yes, it was starting to decline because we at that point we were in a recession. Yeah, and GDP. Just so people know, I have the data here. Uh, GDP was down 5.5 percent for 2009, so it was really bad. But now let's right. do the misery index, and this was eye opening to me. Because the misery index is important because it is a consumer oriented index, right? Unemployment in CPI, right? It's right it's like what we do, right? We work and we consume. Right. So again, uh, the misery index it, for me, having gone back and studied it, cause I've introduced it to my channel about three months ago, anything in double digits is bad. Anything right. in the teens, really bad. So right. 9% plus 0.3 is really simple, right? 9.3%. It wasn't 
it was it wasn't great it just wasn't horrible right it didn't quite get to double digits now you add 3.6 and 8.5 you get 12.1 so it's bad today not horrible but but trending in a bad direction right so, so yeah at least according to the misery index which is a consumer based index it is worse now the great recession the gfc was a very financial wall street oriented which is probably why you and i felt it more mm -hmm. our, our wealth was tied up in that so again my unknown bias probably has me lean back but yeah there i have other metrics um but yeah let me stop there so it is worse today 30 percent worse right 9.3 to 12 right months. That's a and I would argue job. that it's actually probably even worse than that, Michael, because if you look at CPI, and we've talked about this a few times on the show, but the way that the Fed calculates CPI today is different than it was back in the 70s. And there are fewer things in that basket of goods that have direct impact on the American people um, beyond what's contained in CPI, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the way CPI was calculated in the 70s, we are well above 9% inflation today, for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, I did, I, you mean one of the, one of the most annoying parts for me is the rent, right? Cause that's something I can calculate. Rent is supposed to be 33% of CPI. Rent was a laughable 5% in this week's right. calculation. So I can do math. I back out the 5% and I put in 14. It's actually uh, more like 11.2 or 11.3% just with one correction. Uh, absolutely. The other thing is, Amer you know, even though I know that this is, um, it's higher than it was in the 70s, I think a lot of Americans, they're feeling the inflation, right? They're, but they're feeling good overall about, okay, if the Fed gets inflation under control, and most people don't understand how they do that, they're just hearing the news say the Fed's going to raise rates and we're going to get inflation under control, right? Mm -hmm. And you think there's lots of job openings and I'm getting slightly higher wages. That gives us a false sense that things are okay, right? The other thing is Americans, until the last couple of weeks where the stock market really is doing gyrations and having seizures, right, mm -hmm. is our 401k balances if you're investing the average America just in their 401k rather than, you know, in stocks um, have increased yep. and your equity in your home is increased. So yeah. you feel like you're richer, even though most of it is just on paper and the result of probably an asset bubble. The difference between now and 2009 is that the um, the event hasn't yet happened yet right now. Right. So 2009, you were already in a deep recession. Yeah, that was, um, that was close to the bottom, arguably. Yes. Absolutely. And in the 70s, inflation had already been, you know, this time, the inflation had already been rearing up for several years. Yep. We're at the beginning of it. Yes. And if that if that uh, index is already this misery index X where it is, wait until inflation keeps going higher, because the Fed doesn't have a magic pill that just makes it stop immediately. They raise rates. It's going to take a little while for that to trickle down through the system. Yeah. And if they don't do a, a good job of it, right, if it's possible to do, we could have a recession very quickly. And when yeah. that happens, the job losses will magnify, wages will go down while inflation is still ticking up until they get it under control. I think the misery index in a couple of months, Michael, and I'm an optimist at heart. I really am. I, I'm not betting against the American economy or real estate or anything like that over the long haul. Mm -hmm. But in the short term, I think there's going to be quite a bit more misery in the coming months and year than where we are already, oh. which is above the 1970s, as you said. Yeah, I think um, unemployment can't go much lower. I think inflation could moderate just because of how they calculate the base effect, all of that kind of rolling off month after month. But yeah, we're, we're the misery index is not done going up. That's why I brought it to my channel like three months ago. I'm like, guys, this is an early indication. Get comfortable because I think unemployment, I think unemployment by the end of the year could be 5%. I think by the end of next year could be six and a half, seven. It's not going to be under four, right? I do think in the short right. term, I think, I think between now and say June, it could actually go lower. But uh, I, I, like you said, I, I just don't have a great feel for the next 18 months. 2022 yeah. may go down as an okay year statistically. I have no confidence that 2023 is going to be any good. I, I agree with you. And I hate to say that, but, um, but you know, it's true. We are 
to the your viewers point, we have a lot of things underpinning the, the economy that are not in the news every day mm -hmm. that make our system as fragile as it was, if not more in 2008. Um, I did a series of Facebook posts on the history of the Fed. I'd hi highly encourage any of you that follow me to go look, to go look at. It's very long, so we won't talk about it here today. <laughs> But what we what we see is that the Fed essentially has has had two key mandates, Michael, that I think are important to this conversation. Mm -hmm. One has been keep consumer price inflation under control, right? Keep it to two percent is what they try. Somewhere between two and three is what they've generally achieved. Yep. Um, and the other is to be the lender of last resort. So if the economy collapses, they need to help the banks stay afloat, mm -hmm. um, help people stay afloat, not have a run on the U.S. dollar. Um, Several decades ago, the Fed added keep stable employment to one of its mandates. And so the challenge is the Fed puts money in the system, takes money out of the system. It's complex how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then they raise and lower interest rates to try to get this balance of 2% consumer price index and 3 to 4% unemployment. And that number's kind of gone up and down over the history of the Fed. Mm -hmm. The problem is sometimes in the past, they thought, well, if we get inflation too high, it'll lead to unemployment. So we bring inflation down, employment will go up. Um, but the opposite started to happen. Both inflation and unemployment can go up at the same time, but they need two different levers to be pulled by the Fed to control the differences. And so when you have asset inflation, like we've had huge asset inclines over since 2008, um, and you have consumer price inflation, and you have unemployment, generally speaking, those three things don't all go up at the same time. Um, so it's very complicated how the Fed tries to keep it all in balance, right? So we are at a very fragile point in the economy. When we, when Michael and I say we don't have a lot of confidence in the next year and a half, where any little thing goes wrong, like the pan pandemic, now that was a huge thing, mm -hmm. can cause these different things to lose balance. And the Fed has very few, few tools to try to pull it back, right? And so, you know, we're kind of in this place where now we've got the war with Ukraine. Do we get more heavily involved as our government go in more debt to do that. Um, on top of all these other things that we have, mass inflation being its primary, um, how do those things hit the US economy at the same time? How fast can the Fed raise rates before it leads to recession and high unemployment? They really don't know and they've said that. So they're attempting to warn us that they're gonna raise it to hope that the stock market does its gyrations, companies start to prepare for higher um, interest rates to push um, inflation down and start to kind of prepare with some pullbacks before they have to close and lay people off. It's it's going to be a fine dance to try to get it stable um, and working. And I just don't see how the Fed gets us anything but a hard landing that results in in unemployment. Yeah, I, I, and more uh, misery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I um, I think the 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 hope of a soft landing is is it's it's always there, but. We, we lost the opportunity for a soft landing a year ago. They stayed in too long. I mean, they have created such, I just, I had a um, mortgage broker forward me an article. 86% of all loans, residential, have a 4.5% interest rate or lower. There's not a lot of people that are going to want to give that up, especially if rates go higher, even higher from here. We're already at five and a quarter. Owner, we're over, I had an investor send me, the other day, they got a 6.7% quote for 30-year money. The game has changed. The transactions are going to stop. Affordability is broken. The Fed did this. They stayed too. They stayed at the party too long, kept the alcohol too long. Man, we're, it's just, they broke housing, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and we're, in for, we're in for some pain, you know, and, and, but here, here's the thing that, that, you know, as much as I can say, you can look back and say the Fed has messed up. And when you look at history, like I've laid out in these three-part series, the Fed has messed up over and over and over again yeah. in the same ways. And the financial sector reacts over and over the same way because they know what to expect. Mm -hmm. What I will say is there's a phrase that says never bet against the Fed, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to figure out a way to fix the economy and fix all the problems later. And they've been kind of looked at as rescue artists by the financial sector and by big corporations. Yes, things may crash. We'll take a little risk because rates are super low and we, we can't save money and earn. So we'll just use debt to, to grow, right? Mm -hmm. When it all comes crashing down, what does the Fed do? 
They rescue the financial institution. They rescue the hedge funds and the banks and the big, the big, big companies that are systemically important, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't want them to crash and then everything else to crash. But then what do they do? Because things do crash, they lower rates again. So yes, we don't like that, that rates are super high when prices are high. That's the area that we haven't been in very often when both prices and rates are super high. That's bad for today. Yep. But within a few years, as soon as we hit recession, if we do, I can almost guarantee you, unless the Fed completely changes and says, we finally figured out we can't do this again, mm -hmm. they will drop rates again. And when they do, um, and there's a recession, prices will come down in houses, rates will be low. And that's the time that we want to go and go, okay, let's start buying it up as things start to grow again and give us the same thing that we've had in the last 12 years. Yeah, this the, uh, kind of rounding this out. I do think the misery index is something we should follow. Again, it's a very yes. simple math, unemployment plus CPI. Double digits bad, get in the teens really bad. And yep, I agree. It is worse than the, the bottom of the Great Recession, which I would not have guessed when I first kind of read that comment. So Anna, how can people find you? Great. You can find me here every Wednesday and on my channel on One Run a Little Time with you. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and my website is reimom.com. And when Anna says channel, she means playlist on One yes. Run a Little Time. There's a big playlist, hundreds of hours of Anna and I talking. Thank you very much. Thank you.